Hello, hello, hello. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to a Capital Hungry Friday self-development webinar, where we will be today discussing in more detail and focus repetition. Could I get an audio and visual check within the YouTube chat? Um, it's Friday, 5 p.m. I'm not expecting too many people to show up, so this is going to be more available for people to rewatch whenever they have time. Um, I'm not expecting nearly as many people as the live trading streams where people just want signals and trades to take. <laughs> Before I start, can you guys hear me in the YouTube audience? Can you guys see the screen with the layout capital hungry rant? I don't like to make these too long. I just like, like usually these go for maybe 30 minutes to an hour. And everything that we talk about within these Friday self-development live webinars is 1000% applicable and related to financial market trading because as a manual retail trader, one of the largest parts of um, that trading aspect is the psychology, is the emotional control, is our personal self-development and mastery of our own mindset and well-being. Okay, so today... This is going to be following up with um, a couple of webinars already on the Capital Hungry YouTube page. That's obviously there for anybody to go watch. Number one is the uh, Power of Choice webinar, as well as the Delaying Instant Gratification webinar. But today we are going to be breaking down the word repetition, how important it is to reprogramming and overall how important just repetition is to programming a person's mentality and mindset how repetition of certain um, behavioral actions as well as events have led to massive programming of societies throughout history and examples of that and how we can use repetition to our advantage for a potential better outcome of having a more fulfilling life a healthier mind a healthier body and all of those great things that we look to strive for within our life okay so let's make this very short simple and easy what is repetition very easily repetition is simply the continuing recurrence of an action or event now the continuing recurrence of an action or event the repetition behind that is the foundation and the building blocks of developing habits and lifestyles whether those habits are good or bad that is going to come down the line in our webinar when we talk about personal choices to make and of course the society we are in so repetition is the foundation of developing habits whether it's good habits or bad and repetition is also a direct step when you're looking at work ethic in terms of input equals output now that work energy and ethic can be directed to positive features or negative features and we're going to give further examples of that for those of you who don't know i always like to use the gym and working out as an example um, because there's a lot you can relate to the working out in the gym especially and there's a lot you can relate to trading as well a lot of these various behavioral patterns and choices people make they work across the board universally for example very poor decisions within your day-to-day -day life and poor behavioral as well as lack of personal mental control and emotional control is not going to just going to impact your day-to-day -day life it's also going to make it a lot harder for you to find success in wanting to develop your body if you ever want to go open up some type of business if you ever want to look into becoming a sex successful trader sorry it's going to limit your pro process uh, sorry it's going to limit your progress and really leave you not feeling fulfilled or attaining your goals and the gym is a great example of repetition because for those of you who do not know and the, and the gym as well as the human muscle system is a great representation of overall growth and the benefits of repetition towards something healthy productive and valuable to your well-being and for those of you who don't know how muscle growth works basically whenever you are doing an exercise let's just say we're going to keep it very simple and we're thinking about and visualizing right now a bicep curl doing a curling motion with a dumbbell when you are doing an exercise and putting your muscle under stress and tension and then ex and then stretching it out and relieving that stress and tension 
you are literally through those repetitions and that and that um, movement breaking down your muscle so that and that's essentially how muscles build first you break them down through the exercise and then you properly fuel them with the right nutrition and proper rest and they rebuild back stronger more dense and potentially larger as well okay that is the very very simple science behind muscle growth it's repetitions that's why they call it reps in the gym right it is repetitions of certain movements that put whatever muscle you're working under stress and tension and literally break down the muscle fibers under that stress and tension and then after when you fuel yourself feed yourself right and you give enough rest the muscle fibers grow back into a much stronger denser state and even um, starting to develop that muscle memory of becoming more adapted to those continuous movements you are doing so you get more efficient you get better form you get stronger this is a prime example of input equals output when you are choosing to put your repetition in terms of the action you are doing into something that is valuable or effective for your body right but repetition and the and the reoccurrence of an action or event can also be very destructive to your personal well-being mentality and health it's it's both um effective on both ends of the coin right an example of this is let's just say you have somebody who is a daily cigarette smoker well the input and the work they are putting in in terms of the repetition is that every day they are smoking a cigarette I don't care about the reason they do it. I don't care about any of that. The simple breakdown is that every single day they are smoking the cigarette. Well, there is the potential output and outcome that over a consistent period of use of doing this, it can really lead to shortening of your lifespan and a potential plethora of health issues, okay? So without repetition, there is no consistency or discipline, but the repetition has to involve actions or events that bring value and growth across platforms, mentally, physically, and financially. The issue is, subconsciously, people don't realize due to how our society has programmed us through social media, through mass media, and all of this mindless entertainment, people do not realize um, how much repetition they are doing every single day without even realizing or being a part of that process. Majority of people within society are running on what I like to call autopilot, meaning every single day they might have their routine. They're gonna go in the morning, have their coffee, then they go to work, then they have their smoke smokes at work, then after they finish work, they might go for a beer, then they go have a huge meal. Th this is, in essence, the recurrence of an action or event but all of these potential actions or event are actually destructive to that person's long-term well-being but our modern society and system we are involved in is designed that way because the modern society makes it extremely easy to fall victim into the repetition of actions and events that are destructive to a person's growth and well-being but this fuels a capitalistic society in the pockets of the small percent that controls the overall population. The takeaway from this is that the repetition of those poor actions is what leads to the overall programming of a lifestyle and habits. Even though people might not feel like they don't have these choices anymore or everything is essentially out of their control, at the end of the day, it has become a lifestyle and habit for them through the subconscious repetition of those poor actions and decisions. Well, what are some very simple takeaways we can get away, uh, sorry, what are some very simple takeaways we can understand about the modern society just simply looking up statistics and how we have progressed over the last 40 years? If you were to look at, for example, the USA, America, even Canada, and you were to look at overall health of the society and the individual person people are more obese and unhealthier than they have ever been this can go be fact checked we have higher suicide rates than ever before more and more increases in mental illness people being depressed people having anxiety there's scientific proof that in the modern male testosterone levels which is the lifeblood of a man in masculinity testosterone levels have plummeted 
50% in 40 years. 40 years ago in the 1980s, a 60 year old man had more testosterone than a 20 year old man in the modern age and, and era. That's absolutely mind blowing. But if we can take all this away and understand that, okay, the majority of people in society are not living a fulfilling life. They are, they are on average in terms of looking at the statistics on the masses, they are unhealthier. They are more depressed. They are facing more mental illness. They feel more confusion and chaos. The men have lower testosterone levels. This is very easy to identify that none of this is a good outcome. The output of the repetition that they are putting in, even though it's subconsciously, is terrible. The output and outcome of that repetition is very similar to a cigarette smoker smoking every single day, multiple times a day, and then having to face the consequences years down the line and then potentially becoming too late to reverse those consequences it's just that with something like cigarette smoking or somebody who has an addiction to a certain substance that is very well known in society to have negative impacts like somebody has a cocaine addiction or somebody smokes cigarettes every single day it's very easy to understand the potential input and output of that action or event. But society promotes a lot of the actions and events that are actually leading to people becoming more depressed and becoming in a terrible mental and health state, right? We have to understand that the modern day, people have more access to information, they're more connected, they have, there's an endless amount, an endless plethora of entertainment, mindless stimuli, and this has directly led to a lack of work ethic, a lack of willpower, um, a dependency on convenience and ease, falling, falling victim in conforming to societal pressures and various other, uh, various other, um, various other social norms, I guess you can say. People are more lazy, scared than ever before right so we have to understand that what we can take away is that there is certain behavior being repeated that is leading to these outcomes what is that behavior well it's very easy to see people are spending way too much time on social media nobody has that work ethic to go and get what they want anymore we have all this information at our fingertips but people are instead choosing to waste those resources and scroll on TikTok all day or look at fake lifestyles and um, fake influencers on social media or compare to celebrities and or any other type of media, Netflix, video games, whatever it may be. All of this is a lot of visual stimuli that brings short-term dopamine hits, but this repetition is only benefiting the 1%. For the 1%, they're the ones who are behind all of these various corporations, behind big pharma, big food, big media, and so forth, as well as big tech. And they're the ones who are milking these consumers and benefiting from the input of this poor behavior by the masses. But the masses themselves, they are on a constant decline in all aspects of their life. Okay? So... That all seems very terrible. Well, wow, this is so bad. But remember, repetition is the recurrence of an action or event, and we all have the willpower and personal choice to choose what events and actions we do every single day. We just have to become active in our decision-making process and really remove ourselves from that, what I like to call autopilot mode of just following social norms, what's trending, what, what feels comfortable, what feels easy, what feels convenient. Because growth, growth only comes from effectively dealing with stress and pressure in some way or fashion, right? Now, if we can understand that the majority of society is having all of these negative attributes across their financial health, across their physical health, as well as across their mental health, that is not an outcome the majority of us want. Who actually here wants to be physically unfit or wants to be obese or wants to have health issues? Who here actually wants to feel depressed 
or feel anxious or feel like they have no willpower. Who here actually wants to spend mindless hours on video games or entertainment? Or does it feel like you're almost stuck in this cycle that has been that you can't get out of now? Right? That is because without you knowing subconsciously that repetition of those poor actions and behavior leads to a lifestyle and habits that becomes your new program of the supercomputer in your head. Remember, we all have access to the same resources as well as the same supercomputer between our easy between our ear sorry and it is very easy to have that supercomputer programmed by external stimuli do you understand so we have to understand that but that also means there is a light at the end of the tunnel if we actively become involved in our decision making process and choose various actions and events that are the opposite in terms of what the masses are doing as a collective. So this means, logically speaking, to obtain an output long term that is the opposite of the above, meaning a healthier mind, a healthier body, a fulfilling life, maybe more money in the bank, higher testosterone as a man, stronger willpower and confidence, and so forth, we must choose to do the opposite in terms of what we repeat day in and day out of what the masses are doing. This is going to seem extremely difficult and because your mind has already been programmed into this vicious destructive cycle that fuels consumerism as well as the 1%, your brain is going to naturally make excuses as emotions come in play and provide distractions for your brain. Oh, don't worry, a little bit of Instagram is okay. Don't worry, you're only going to play video games for a few hours today. You deserve it, you're tired, don't worry. Go smoke this extra weed. Go have this extra drink. Your brain, which has already been programmed to be a consumer, is going to want to continue to consume, right? It is only going to want to consume and continue to feed that short-term dopamine hit. But your brain doesn't understand that the computer it is, it has been programmed this way. You have to have the willpower, as we discussed in the previous webinar to first be self-aware enough to say, okay, what are the habits I'm repeating every single day? And is there any value within these habits? Unless I have some type of business via social media, what is the purpose of me being on social media? Your brain might make the excuses. Well, you're talking to friends. You want to see what your friends are up to. Call your friends. Text your friends. You don't need Instagram to contact the real friends in your life. You probably have their number. You can call them, you could meet them. If they're across the world, you could still call them and have that interaction, right? Well, then you might be spending too much time on video games and your brain is gonna go, well, video games help relieve stress. Okay, go to the gym instead or do something that's physical that can also relieve stress and improve your physical health and well-being instead of deteriorating your mind over time and only having you further distracted. But your brain, you have to understand, through this process of self-awareness, your brain is going to keep trying to push you towards the bad habits because the bad habits involve less work, they are safer, they are, easily to, they are easier to attain, they are right at your fingertips, and they give you that short-term dopamine hit. But the long-term output is your personal self-destruction. And if you keep repeating that day in and day out, that repetition is going to lead to long-term destruction. Okay? So a lot of people can get overwhelmed through this self-awareness process, but it is very simple and it is very easy once you start taking the baby steps. Now listen to what I said, taking the baby steps. This doesn't mean you have to start running right away. You have to go from zero to a hundred. You have to become a millionaire. You have to become a bodybuilder. You have to be the next Elon Musk. No, 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 no. You have to start being self-aware enough to dissect what you do every single day and how you spend every single minute and then and then deduct over a week what is repeating through this because whatever is repeating every single day that is what is leading to emotional impact to mental impact and potentially deteriorating your life if it is all negative so if you're seeing when you deduct every single day and you can check all this information on your phone you uh, about how much screen time you have or on these various applications about how many hours you spend on them. If you say, as an example, you spend 
one to three hours a day on TikTok or on Instagram every single day, right? You multiply that by five, you multiply that by four, this is the X amount of whatever 50 to 100 hours you, be, you may be wasting a month. You are not just wasting those hours on Instagram. You are also getting programmed through those 50 to 100 hours with all the advertisements you're being shown, with all the stimuli of various celebrities, memes, social media influences. And this is programming you to also be a better consumer, but a terrible human being. Do you understand? It's not just a loss of time. People just think, oh, I just spent three hours on Instagram. It's not a big deal. I wasted that time. It's not, even though time is money and time is extremely precious, it is not just a waste of time. You're also giving up that 50 to 100 hours of attention and your, and your, um, and your person, your attention to get manipulated and programmed into the way that the corporations want you to think in terms of what you're being advertised, right? You have to understand this has already been shown and proven through, um, that documentary on Netflix, The Social Dilemma. Every single person's social media feed, every single person's social media feed, sorry, is directly created based on their personality and what they like to see. So you, it can have you hooked on your phone for an endless scroll period. You're gonna see advertisements towards your interests. You're gonna see posts about things you find interesting. And the more you interact with these posts, the more you're gonna get the, of those posts. There's even strategies um, through these social media apps where it's an endless infinite scroll and they might show you three pictures that you're not gonna like, but the fourth one is something that really gives you a little dopamine hit or is interesting to you. Then that leads you to scroll for another two hours, right? All of these applications all of these programs, all of these services are designed to farm and mine your attention because one of the biggest commodities in the modern world is no longer oil. It's people's data, information, and attention. Why do you think something like YouTube is so big? And if you look at the YouTube um, payment scheme, my account isn't monetized, but I've studied this a lot about big YouTubers. YouTubers don't get paid um, the majority of their money based on likes or subscribers. They get, paid, they get paid on viewer retention. How many viewers you have is great, but how long are those viewers watching your content? Because if you have a one hour video you're posting and you have a million subscribers and your average viewer is watching your video for 40 minutes, YouTube can shit in three ads in that 40 minutes, maybe even four ads, right? It's all about attention and the retention of that focus. So one of the biggest commodities in the modern world, especially over the last five years, as technology and social media has developed is a person's information, data and attention. So when you're spending this hour on Instagram every day, it might seem mindless, but that's how it's supposed to feel. You're not supposed to feel your time getting taken away. You're not supposed to feel your data being collected. You're not supposed to feel your mind deteriorating. That's why you get these short-term dopamine hits to make it everything feel like it's normal. This is how it's supposed to be. But if this is how it's supposed to be, if social media is so great, if all these distractions are so beneficial, then why is our modern society unhealthy? Why are suicide rates so high? Why are people more depressed? Why is testosterone so low? In an age of the in the age where connectivity is the highest, I can literally go meet someone in a different country and talk to them over internet. Someone in Dubai if I wanted to tomorrow. I could literally find information on any topic, any industry like that in a Google search. With all this information, with all this resources and potential at our fingertips, why are people in the majority in, in such a terrible state of well-being? Because the reality is all of those daily repetitive tasks and actions are actually destructive to our long-term growth and to our long-term well-being. Okay? So, that's all shit. Yeah, society wants it to be that way. The system is created that way because this system, this cycle, that farming of people's mind, that mining of people's data and attention, that is a big money maker. The world runs on dollars at the end of the day, right? That fuels the pockets of big tech because think about it. 
You spend all this time, attention, and effort on these various technical applica technological applications. Social media, whether it's YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be, right? You get programmed through those applications and marketed various services, products, food, or whatever it may be. And most of those services and products are also destructive to your health and well-being, but they make you a perfect consumer. So you end up going from social media, wasting your time and effort there, and then you feel like eating McDonald's because you didn't even realize through your three hours of scrolling social media, you got fed four McDonald's ads. Or for the last week, you've been, so been short-term getting these McDonald's ads. Now all of a sudden, you're craving McDonald's. After your McDonald's, you go to Amazon to do a little bit of shopping for something you don't even need because you don't even realize you were looking at, you were looking at 30 different Amazon ads without even knowing. Then you go buy this, you waste some more money, your finances are going down, your physical well-being is going down, your mental well-being is going down. There's no value being brought to the people. There's no growth being brought to the people. There's no benefit for the people. But it's not but there's not it's never supposed to benefit the people. It's only supposed to benefit the small percent who run these societies. <clears throat> Does that make sense for everybody so far? Whoever's in the chat so far? Okay, so the focus of this webinar is to become active in our decision making process as well as choose to repeat actions and events that are going to bring us value and growth as well as benefit our well being in life. For example, instead of spending time on video games and wasting your time on video games to relieve stress or jerking off on porn. Only fans to relieve stress and busting a nut to relieve stress, do something physical. Any type of physical activity. You don't have to be a bodybuilder. Go play a sport with your friends. Go for a jog. Go for a bike ride. Go for a hike. Go work out and exercise. You will get the same relief of stress while also putting your body into a better, um, healthier state of well being. Then, guess what? When you start to replace anything that you use to relieve stress right now that is not beneficial for you for example going on porn or using a drug or playing excessive video games or whatever it may be when you replace that with something that is beneficial for you for example physical activity when you're when you are working out hard and you just did a, for example how many people here when you feel like shit and you feel lazy and you're just like, you're just going with the flows. You don't mind grabbing a cheeseburger. You don't mind grabbing that fast food because you don't think anything of it. But I bet if you went to the gym for a week or you worked out for a week and you're starting to feel better, you're working on your cardio health, you're working on your muscular development, your mind is not going to want you to go eat fast food. As you're trying to develop yourself, your mind is going to naturally say, wait a second, maybe I should eat a little bit better as well. Everything here works hand in hand. It's a cycle. It's a, it's a spider web of rep, repetitive behavior and actions to lead to your personal development. So number one, if you are using something to relieve stress that is destructive to your long-term health, both physically or mentally, whether it's cigarettes, porn, certain drugs, excessive video games, replace that with some physical activity. Replace that with yoga. Replace that with meditation. Now, understand that when you transition into replacing these bad habits with good habits, you are going to be miserable in the short term because you are stopping your brain from getting that dopamine hit. It's like a crackhead going off crack and starting to eat healthier and drink more water. <clears throat> they're gonna have they're gonna have some type of withdrawals. Because your body is your body and mind is fiending for that substance. It's fiending for that dopamine hit. But you have to have the willpower and mental strength to look past that. So another good point I want to say is that when you're going through this process of repetition and repeating positive actions and behaviors, you cannot get distracted by emotions. Emotions do not matter. If you have a goal of wanting to develop your body and put more muscle on and get cut up or whatever it may be, you can't follow your emotions of the days you feel tired and lazy and skip the gym or the days you feel or you're having a craving to go eat that extra ice cream or eat that extra 
whatever fast food junk. You can't follow those emotions because it'll take away from your long-term goal. That's the same across any aspect. Now, I'm just using the gym. I'm just using these various drugs or social media as an example. This is the same thing in trading. Majority of my viewers are traders or people who want to become traders. Why do you think that statistic that 90% of traders fail? It has nothing to do with the technicals. It has nothing to do with the fundamentals. It has nothing to do with their trading system or style. It has everything to do with the poor repetitive behavior that the masses that the masses go through every single day. Within trading, that's emotional trading, no trading plan, no analysis, no knowledge, gambling, over trading, over leveraging. The majority of people within the retail trading market constantly repeat those poor actions and events. That's why they fail. It's not brokers are going after traders. It's not the market is manipulative. It's not all of these excuses and external events. It is the person's own choice. And that same statistic exists in society. We can see that the majority of society, maybe 70 to 90% of society is unhealthy. Suicide is going up. They're more depressed. They're not making as money. They're not making as much money as they want They're not feeling fulfilled in their life Well, that same statistic can be dragged into any industry or any field where people are trying to improve or do more For example, if you look at professional athletes You have to realize that out of the majority of people who try to become a professional athlete Let's just say in the NBA maybe five maybe one to five percent of the majority of people who put in the time and effort actually make it within trading out of the majority of people who actually want to be successful traders maybe one to five percent actually make it out of the 99 percent who are mentally ill depressed unhealthy maybe one to five percent actually get a stronger outcome of the opposite but that one to five percent isn't doing anything that's a secret they are following repetition in good behavioral patterns and decisions. They don't take the, that athlete doesn't take the days off. He reviews that NBA person wants to go in the NBA. They practice every single day. They eat the right foods. They get the right amount of rest. They push their body and mind to the limit. They try to learn as much as possible. They keep refining their game. A great example, Kobe Bryant, right? The Mamba mentality. Do you think? Do you think the 99% of people in trading, the 99% of people in society, the 99% of people who want to be athletes, do you think they really follow the Mamba mentality? No, they don't. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because repetition seems so simple. Okay, I just have to repeat good things. But people don't realize how much they have already been involved in subconscious repetition that's destroying their life. So this is such a simple concept. Repetition is literally the foundation. Repetition is the foundation of developing habits and is a direct step in input equals output. But the majority of society and the majority of people are repeating poor behavior, poor events, poor actions. That's only leading to their personal destruction. So my advice and my steps. First of all, you have to have a certain level of self-awareness to be completely real and honest with yourself and deduct how you spend every single minute of your day, but what you're actively doing. Are you smoking a cigarette every morning? Are you drinking this coffee every morning? Are you, are you going on social media for hours? Are you going on Netflix for hours? Are you going jerking your dick for hours, playing video games for hours? And then be able to deduct what repetitive tasks every day are bringing you value or growth. If they are not bringing you any type of value, if they are not bringing you any type of growth, if they are not benefiting you in any type of way, you have to slowly X out those poor choices, behaviors, and actions, and also replace them with, event, with um, various events or actions that delay instant gratification. For example, physically working out. Instead of going on social media, reading an actual real book that can teach you something. It can be anything. It could be about quantum fucking physics, space, history. I don't care. It's probably still better than looking at memes on Instagram. Right? Choosing better food habits with what you're eating and with what you're consuming in your body. 
not just going after emotional choices of what you're craving, of what you feel like, of what you want in this little moment right now. That's all bullshit. That's all fucking fugazi nonsense that's going to lead to you not being fulfilled in your life. Is everybody following along? All right. So logically speaking, to obtain an output that is the opposite of the above being this, because, because, hey, who in the chat wants this? Tell me right now if anybody in the chat wants to have a lack of willpower. They want to be lazy. They want to be distracted all the time. They want to be scared. They want to be on social media all the time. You want to be depressed. Who, who actually wants to have low testosterone? Who, who actually wants to be unhealthy? Who actually wants these outcomes? Nobody wants this, but this is the outcome of the majority of the masses. It's fucking mind-blowing, is it not? Nobody actually wants to be this way. Everybody actually wants the opposite of these outcomes. Well, the opposite of these outcomes is only going to come from doing the opposite of the behaviors and actions and events that these people do. Repetition. Repetition on the good side. Putting ourselves through healthy stress and pressure, whether it be on our body, whether it be on our mind, whether it be through physical education or physical fitness, or whether it be through educating your mind to learn something new. Some people don't like to learn something new because it gives them a headache. It can be stressful. They don't pick it up right, right away. That's the same way as like when you're going to the gym for the first time and you're not going to be able to lift 300 pounds. You're going to have to start small. You're going to have to go through those reps. You're going to have to develop your muscle. Your brain is the same way. Take the baby steps. Okay? So does anybody have any questions? I don't want to make this too long and too repetitive. <laughs> I don't want to repeat what I've been saying too much, even though that repetition is extremely key and is the building block. It is the foundation of a habit, good or bad. It is the direct step in input equals output. That's why in Capital Hungry, all we do and we repeat every single week is fundamentals, technicals, trading psychology. That's why with my own personal life, I have to go to the gym every single day. I have to meal prep and cook for myself. Right. So don't, for, so don't be scared to grow. Don't be scared to change. Just because when you're going through growth or change in whatever level of your life, you might feel uncomfortable, you might feel some stress or pressure, that's normal. That's normal. Okay? So if nobody has any questions or anything regarding this webinar, that I'm going to save and end this. And that was the Capital Hungry Friday Self-Development Live webinar. Um, goes great in hand in hand with these other ones as well. For example, the uh, webinar on willpower. The webinar on delaying instant gratification. On how to use aggression as a man. The webinar on dependence on substances. The power of choice, mental lockdown, and tons more. I don't want to make these too long, but tons and tons of webinars here. Alright. Yeah, there's always going to be haters and trolls. That's normal. But alright, make sure you guys re-watch this. I will see you guys on Monday evening for the Monday Market Update webinar. And this is going to be safe for anybody to rewatch as they wish. Everybody take care. Have a good Friday and have a great weekend.